to provide a critical analysis, documentation, and visualization of the mother-child relationship, Mary Kelly created the artwork postpartum document. It was rather closely connected to the women's liberation movement in the United Kingdom. To analyze the artist and her obsessive behavior, the psychoanalyst Yaak Lacan, who had a strong impact on feminism, should be referred to. To understand how Yaak Lacan's theory was applied to the artwork, we should pay attention to two concepts: the mirror stage and the real, the imaginary, the symbolic. Let me explain the real, the imaginary, the symbolic first. The three terms, respectively, stand for three stages. In the first months of the life, the infant lives a disordered life. He or she cannot distinguish ego from the other, which is in the real. At this moment, the infant only has physiological needs, which can be satisfied easily by object. Under these conditions, the infant cannot perceive the difference between him or herself and the subject. Therefore, mother can still regard her child as her own part. Now we may understand that why fecal stains and feeding charts were documented, because they stand for the basic and instinctive physiological needs. According to Lacan, in the imaginary, not only can the infant notice the existence of the other, he or she can also get to know the ego. However, the recognition is through the mirror. In other words, is a kind of imago. In psychology, imago belongs to imagination. Meanwhile, Lacan suggests that imaginary identification is always identification on behalf of a certain gaze in the other. The baby was once a part of the mother; however, they were physically apart. When the infant became aware of what the real ego was, the mother started to recognize her real ego as well, the part which was without her baby, especially in her child's presence. She felt anxious, and she yearned for the initial status and the love from her baby. When the infant achieves the ability to use language, it implies a loss in the symbolic. Similarly, the word "mother" is the substitute of the entity, which means the loss of mother, because we don't have to refer to mother if she is present. From then on, the infant is literally separated from the mother. In Lacan's view, it is through language that the subject can represent desires and feelings. It is through the symbolic order that the subject is constituted. Inspired by the significance of language use, Mary Kelly recorded the statements of the child when the child started entering patterned speech and their daily conversations. Correspondingly, the gifts given by her child were kept carefully by Mary Kelly as a substitute of his love for mother. Again, it indeed broke the pattern that fecal stains and feeding charts were recorded in the first section of the documentation, indicating that the infant started to win from the breast. However, we should have noticed that the infant was six months old at that time, which was paid great attention to in Lacan's *The Mirror Stage*. In Lacan's point of view, the establishment of consciousness takes place from six months old when the infant can recognize his or her own complete image in the mirror. This is the so-called mirror stage. The mirror stage also refers to the circumstances in which reality and imagination are confused. Therefore, there are also possibilities that Mary Kelly did documentation with certain obsessive behaviors to help herself differentiate the illusion of only her child forever from the reality of losing her child in some way. To conclude, the reasons why Mary Kelly showed obsession to some extent in her artwork can be divided into two cores. On the one hand, the real, the imaginary, the symbolic, and the mirror stage are both based on the physiological needs and reactions of infants. Therefore, experience and behaviors related to physiology are mostly kept in record. On the other hand, through the documentation of interactions and understanding, such as daily communications and gifts, what the artist wants to document is not only the formation and maturity of her child, but also the development of her own ego. Furthermore, in the field of psychoanalysis, one's strong feelings for others also means intense narcissism, which indicates that Mary Kelly gains great sense of achievement from the identity of mother.